Let's talk about condensation. What is condensation? Why does it occur? Condensation is the moisture vapor inside the air that when we come in contact with the surface that's below dew point or condensing point, the moisture turns from vapor into water droplets. So it condenses out of the air, thus condensation. Where does condensation naturally occur in an HVAC system? In the cooling coil, at the evaporator. We have cold refrigerant to make a cold, cold cooling coil, and we have warm moist air coming across it from the space. So when the warm moist air touches the cold cooling coil, the, the air is dropped below the dew point, the water vapor is turned to liquid, and those water droplets are then condensation, and it's drained outside. That's where we want the moisture to be removed. That's where condensation is desirable in an HVAC system. Where is condensation not desirable in an HVAC system? Pretty much every place else. On the air handling cabinet, on the interior components of the air handler like blowers and electrical controls and the insert tight surfaces of insulation, insulation facing. We don't want it on the exterior of our ducts. We don't want it at collars. We don't want it at register boxes. We don't want it on the registers themselves. Pretty much any place besides the cooling coil or the evaporator coil, condensation is undesirable. What happens if there's condensation in those places? Well, you've got the nuisance of water leaks and water damage, whatever that might cause. You've got the, one of the ingredients to start growing microbials or mold, which is moisture. If it, moisture is combined with food and darkness, we have mold. Sounds like the inside of our air handling unit. Sounds like the inside of our ducts. So that kind of makes sense. Sounds like, you know, lots of the things where these areas of condensation would be undesirable. So how do we prevent condensation on these places we don't want? Well, first let's think about what causes condensation. Condensation is where we take something that's hot with moisture in it and we touch it with something that's cold low dew point. Simple as taking a Coke can out of the refrigerator and walking outside of it. If we don't have that Coke can insulated with a koozie or a Yeti or something else, what's going to happen immediately to the outside of that can? It's going to condensate. It's going to form water droplets on the outside. And the beverage inside is going to get warmer too. So how do we prevent condensation? We don't let the thing that's cold, the fluid and the container, the can it's in, contact the hot humid environment directly. We put a barrier of insulation between them. So in our case, what's cool is the air inside of the system, the air inside of the ducts, and our can is the ducts. So what do we do? We insulate. We seal and we insulate. We make sure that there's no air leaking, because when the cold air leaks and touches a hot environment, that's a formula for condensation really. And we make sure that even if no air is leaking, that no cold surfaces see hot environments. So that's really important. We have to make sure our duct insulation is, is complete and continuous the entire way. No breaches, no patches, none of the cloth gray stuff anywhere. It's got to be sealed. It's got to be all one contiguous thing sealed so that no air can get up underneath any of the surfaces. So if air gets behind that insulation, condensation is going to occur. We've got to make sure that all of our boxes, everything, Everything that is cold, has cold inside of it, is insulated from hot and sealed from hot. Our air handler is a particular concern, though, because our air handler, well, most air handlers operate underneath a negative pressure. When you look at it, at the outlet of the air handler is the fan deck, and the blower sits at the top, and the cooling coil sits below it. So we pull our return air across the cooling coil, suck it into our blower, and then blow it out of our supply. That means that the coldest point in the system is between where the outlet of the evaporator is and the inlet of the blower. That's the inside of the air handling unit cabinet. The coldest point is inside the air handling cabinet. Well, that makes sense. That's where we're generating the cooling. The problem is, where in the world is our air handling cabinet? Probably in the hottest place. Up in a brutally hot attic, out in a brutally hot garage, subjected to the hottest environment, the coldest thing. That's the exact perfect storm to have condensation problems on the exterior or the interior of the air handling unit. If you open the air handling unit and all the surfaces are wet, condensation. How, why are there? That means something warm is coming in contact with something cold. 
Well, what's something warm inside the coldest part of the system? Well, if the cooling coil is at the bottom and the blower is up above, sucking, pulling a negative pressure, any leaks in that cabinet that are after or bypass the cooling coil is going to leak hot air into the coldest point of our system. So around line sets, around drains potentially, around the cabinet edges and joints themselves, any air that leaks into any of that, potentially electrical connections, anything on the negative side of the blower, but after the evaporator pour, where it's the coldest point of the system that leaks air, is going to condensate. And as it condensates, it's going to be an opportunity for microbial growth. It's going to feed mold. Where do you see this? Any paper things inside the air handle, like wiring diagrams, uh, certain types of wire insulation on motors and controls that have organics in them. They get all molded up and black. The interior surfaces of the air handle insulation, molded up and black. You gotta prevent condensation. You prevent condensation by keeping cold things away from hot things. So you do that by sealing them up so there's no air leakage. No air can leak from inside the duct out. No air can leak and touch the cold surface. And then you insulate it. And you make sure the insulation's all sealed, that nothing can get through it. If you do that, you won't have condensation. It will only occur where you want it. If we go to a job and we see signs of condensation, we gotta think. Something warm is touching something cold, and it's not supposed to. Even if the client's not aware of it, if we've done our job and asked permission, and said, if you happen to see anything that could cause any problems, would you like us to share it with you or not? We gotta say, I know you didn't ask for this, but when I was up there doing my tuna, looking at cleaning the duct cleaning job, looking at replacing your system, what I noticed was there's a bunch of areas where there's condensation occurring. And then explain the same thing. That's where warm meets cold, and it's never good. It's your house, your money, your decision, but it's my job to tell you as your consultant, as your expert, that this is going to be a problem. It's your job to decide if you want to fix it or not. I tell, you decide. Pretty simple. So condensation is essentially like a rainstorm. Think about when warm meets cold and then it rains. It's a thunderstorm. So whenever we see moisture on the outside of the surface, on the inside of the surface, if there's mold growing around collars, Anything that's wet or has signs that it's been wet means that something warm came in contact with something cold so that the warm, the warm air and the warm water vapor was cooled below its dew point and it condensed. It formed water droplets and that's what created wet. And wet created mold. So how do we prevent that? That's our job to make sure we inform our clients so they can make the most intelligent decision for their need. But condensation is not normal anywhere except the evaporator or cooling coil in the system, and condensation occurs when warm meets 